Welcome to Surfaces and Splines, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Demani Group. And in Surfaces and Splines, we take a look at the production tool-ready modeling of this work flashlight. In this installment, we'll take a look at the differences of blending shapes together instead of using the fillet tool to create transitions. So the fillet tool can sometimes yield satisfactory results, but we, by, by building a blend manually, we always get exactly what the geometry needs to be. In this example, I've applied just a constant uh, radius fillet. Here I applied a, a curvature continuous face fillet with the uh, constant chord width option turned on, and it's getting a little better. And finally, but the shape of our surface blend can be dialed in a little more precisely to match exactly the geometry we need. So in Saul's works here, we see the differences between the two. If we turn off our edges, the start of the constant radius fillet can very clearly be seen right here, whereas the curvature continuous fillet is a little more smooth. You don't see that abrupt start of the fillet. However, the geometry of this is still dictated by uh, what the tool or what the feature creates and not what we explicitly define. So if we do need to create a manual blend, we can do that in the same way we created some of these corner fillets earlier. Here I have a split line on the top plane used to define an area for the fillet. I remove that portion from the model. I need to create some draft references. Make sure we have that correct two degree draft. Now I can't build draft into this feature um, simply because uh, they would both be going the same way and this needs to, they kind of need to be symmetric to each other. So I'll use the draft tool. Draft tool works on surfaces. I have the parting line option turned on to draft that uh, helper surface. Finally I draft the other one. And now here I've built one big boundary surface. My result is pretty good. If we turn off you see we have our, our result looks really nice, but it almost looks like there's a little bit of puckering, a little bit of distortion here. If we look at our zebra stripes, we can increase the mesh density to take a look what's happening. Here we just want direction one. It looks like there's a little bit of wavering here. Maybe my eye is picking it up. We're probably pretty good here, but 99% of the time. But if we want that extra level of finesse, what we could do is trim back and just keep that portion of that boundary surface right where we liked it. We can knit that into the model. Ignore that pink line. It's a graphics artifact from the boundary surface preview. It happens sometimes. Uh, it'll only go away when I close this window. And now I can complete these blends by using surface fill. Tangent to all edges. Remember I don't necessarily need curvature. I'll use the uh, curvature analysis tools to evaluate, yeah, I do have a pretty good connection here. No need for the uh, the curvature option. Tangent is working just fine here. I'll create a second uh, surface fill here. Delete the helper surfaces and finally knit everything into the model. So it can be a really easy way to, uh, to create blended transitions instead of just relying on the fillet tool uh, to find the the area with a either a surface trim or a split line. If required, create reference surfaces. Use a boundary surface to build the majority. And here, I, there were a couple spots of the boundary I didn't like, so I trimmed them back and replaced them with surface fills. So thanks for watching this week's installment of Services and Blinds. Please follow the Demani Group on LinkedIn, where we'll be posting new videos in the series.